What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Easy Peasy Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Johnson. Joining me this week, Nick. How's it going, guys? Wake up, Nick. Dan. What up, what up? Wake up, Dan. All right, let's get started with our favorite, most, like, the worst food that you ever get. Like, the fast food, the nasty. Like, on your cheat day, Nick and I diet. So, like, on our cheat day, Nick, what is your favorite go-to? Um, recently, it's been, like, Northern Lights. Um... Dude, oh, I'm all Northern about Lights Northern pizza. Lights. I'm totally like, what, what's your favorite pizza in Des Moines, Dan? There's not that many good choices, like compared to Chicago. Yeah, but I would have to say Casey's Pizza is up there. Yeah, I cannot Casey's argue with Casey's, there. dude. The <laughs> bottom right. line is like, I love Casey's, but it's like, it's one of those things where I, once I bite into like the second or third, I'm like, Ugh. you can like <laughs> literally see the grease. Like, well, that's what yeah. we're talking about right now. It is super greasy. Yeah. yeah. No, I know, but like, it's just like, oh, so my stomach. And it's just, <laughs> I don't know. What about you? Your favorite pizza in Des Moines is that Northern Lights right now? Uh, I don't know. Lately, it has been, but I do dig a good taco pizza from Casey's. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. I like I said, I can't argue with. <laughs> I cannot argue with that. Definitely my favorite pizza right now is uh, Northern Lights. Listeners, write in to us and uh, let us know at theeasypeasypodcast at gmail.com and let us know what your favorite pizza is. But enjoy the conversation. <laughs> this is a conversational podcast. But let me see. I'm trying to think. There aren't that many, like, really good pizzas in Des Moines, right? Like Chicago. Oh, my God. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree. There's not much variety. I mean, there's Fong's Pizza, which has some different options, but at the same time, it's not that different. Right. It's it's okay if you're really drunk, but it's not exceptionally good pizza by any means. If you want to slice, it's a good place to go. (laughs) So what about other fast foods, nasty foods that you're just going to eat, like gorge on cheat days? Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, Chipotle. I want to get some of that today. I got a Chad. Shout out to Chad. He's out getting a tattoo off Myrtle. Hey, I want to go and just snag some Chipotle after I go and see him. How do you feel about Poncheros compared to no. Chipotle? No. Burrito okay. goo. Agreed. Burrito Agreed. goo. Agreed. Burrito goo. Okay, so what happened was I used to be all about Poncheros about two and a half, two, three years ago. And then I met Lydia. Started getting to Chipotle. Like, I've never had Chipotle until I met her like two, two and a half years ago. And um, it was like life changing. It was. It, well, it's really good. I, I love the establishment. I like how they like to do everything in the stores. Um, they're like what? Gr- is it grass fed beef? It's like it's just like really. I don't know. It's like a yeah, clean yeah. environment. Yeah, they're all about that because that's what my my biggest things against Chipotle that I have going for Poncheros is Ponchero says queso. Ah, okay. And Chipotle True. did not, and they're never going to get it uh, due yeah. to uh, freshness reasons, basically. Okay. Um, so I actually just went to the ch- the Chipotle out in Jordan, Jordan Creek. Like, okay, I did. It too just last opened week. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the guy that was making our, he was like the manager. He was like talking to us the whole time while they were like making our burritos and stuff. And they didn't have any chicken. Like, like, just, and there was, like, nobody in the store. It's not like they just got, like, ransacked. Right. Like, he, they didn't have any chicken at all. And so we're just like, what the heck? And Lydia, lo- that's all she'll get, chicken. I'm, like, all about the steak. Oh, no, I'll do the chicken oh, yeah. extra chicken on mine. Chicken extra chicken, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, like, order in, uh, so I get steak. I'm, like, moving through the line, and then Lydia's getting chicken. He's like, oh, we're out of chicken, like, real quick. Like, they're cutting it up or whatever. And you can see it in the back, which I really appreciate, too. I like how it's yeah, set that's up. Yeah, cool. Um... So he's just like takes her burrito, throws in the trash, <laughs> and like so rice and beans burrito, and throws it in the trash. And he's just like, yeah, we'll get you a fresh burrito, and you can have a free drink because we don't have chicken yet. Oh, like, they're cutting it up. So that was Chipotle like legit. always hooks me up. When I went to the Jordan Creek one, they gave me a free drink. When I've gone to the Merle Hay one, was the manager a uh, tall black dude? No. Okay. <laughs> because that was the manager on site la- that night, like oh, yeah? just Friday night, and he straight up hooked us up with a free drink. And he made it like, he's like, we're going to get your burrito fresh. Like he was made it a point. It was cool. Okay. Yeah. There's been multiple times at the Merle Hay Chipotle <sighs> where they've given me half off or something. Uh, uh, one really? About two weeks. Yes. I was just talking to the guy behind me in line and we were kind of talking to the guy making our food and I never complained about my food or anything. But I got, like, the last of the chicken. And <laughs> right. then the guy behind me was like, oh, are you guys out of chicken? And then he's like, no, we got all the fresh chicken here. So then I made a joke. I'm like, oh, you gave me, like, the chicken that wasn't fresh. <laughs> right. Like, oh, no, 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 it's okay. We'll, we'll give you a discount. And they gave me, like, half off my burrito. When, honestly, I was just making a joke about it. <laughs> That's legit. Yeah, they do seem to care. Yeah. It's good. I've always liked it. Um, 
so what I I'm not trying to put that Merle Hay store on blast, but <laughs> F that Merle Hay store. There's this homeboy that always makes my burrito, always breaks it every time. <laughs> so I have to get a double tortilla uh, every time. And it's not like I get like a monster burrito. I don't do double chicken. I don't do double anything. I just do uh, white rice, black beans, chicken veggies, <laughs> sour cream cheese, and that's it. Like. Hmm. I don't even get lettuce half the time. Like sometimes See, you get lettuce, lettuce for me is just filler. Right. <laughs> same with filler. same with rice. I don't do rice on mine because it's okay, but I'd r- much rather do extra chicken than just right. have some filler in it. So before we get into your favorite foods, Nick, besides excuse me, Northern Lights. Um, so the reason why I'm gonna I'm gonna dip back to Poncheros. The reason why I can't eat Poncheros anymore is because when I first met Lydia, we went to Chipotle for almost our first yeah our first date. Uh, we went and saw Evil Dead and then the the remake in 2013, nice. which is really good. Oh yeah! Oh my god! One of my favorite horror movies has come out in the last few years. Um, and then we got Chipotle at, at Valley West. Um, she was talking about how it's like burrito goo, like yeah. burrito mush, because they take that bob, you know, like that famous bob, and yeah. they just like mix it all together. It's, it's like good. literally a sour cream white, like <laughs> nasty frothy like. Ugh, burrito goo. So I can't eat there anymore. Like, it's, it just doesn't work. See, I, I do have I, a lot I'm against sure. Poncheros, especially their serving sizes, because I always do extra chicken at any burrito place, and I have to do triple chicken at Poncheros <laughs> to even get close to the amount where it's just double chicken. Oh so I get, the, like, this tiny little burrito for, like, $12 at Poncheros. Dude, I know. That's the only thing I hate, too, is, like, when you get anything extra, veggies, It's, like, cream, multiple queso. dollars, like, each. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. So. I got a burrito for like 10 bucks. Of course, they're the size of like a small baby. They're huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what I will say about both establishments is they're very clean. I love the service. Like I'm always treated really well with like a lot of respect. I really do like both establishments that way. True. Like you were saying, you got a free pop. Just like Lydia yeah. got a free pop. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Right. So Nick, besides Northern Lights, I know you like Chipotle too. Yep. What else is your go-to like, you know, just, I'm on a cheat day with Shayna, let's get down, let's get dirty. Um, I don't know, lately it's been, like, a lot of just, like, candy and shit. It's really bad. God, but, well, Halloween, Halloween. True. And then, um, have you ever been to any of these high gas stations that have popped up? Yeah. They're okay. Really cool. They're really nice, and they have a lot of, like, food and stuff from high V that okay. they bring over. So you can get, like, all these, like, big stuffs and, like, brownies and snickerdoodles and, So, like, like they have a, like, a bakery or, uh, like, a kitchen? Not exactly, but they bring over, like, fresh stuff from... Oh, Friday. okay. So it's really cool because it's, like, nice and convenient and you can just pick it up. So we can get a lot of stuff like that. Like You last- don't usually go to Hy-Vee, do you? Oh, no, yeah, yeah no. that's your go-to. Hy-Vee's our go-to. You and Shane, I like to go grocery shop at Hy-Vee. Yeah. Um... So yeah, let's get into Price Chopper. Price <laughs> yeah. Chopper's taking over Des Moines, which is kind of okay. I don't know. Like basically, if what I like about Price Chopper is if you go in and you shop the ad, yeah. you like save a ton of money. Sure. You really do have the prices chopped. Right. But like if you go just normal grocery shopping, yeah. you're gonna get ran- like your well, your wallet's gonna get ransacked. Like it's all gonna get really? bent over. Well, it's true. Like <laughs> have you have you well, been in there lately? I haven't been in the Price Chopper. Because I've never heard exceptionally good things about it. Hmm. So right, your sister was saying yeah that the produce estuary isn't, on isn't that uh, fresh. Yeah. So and I mean that's not like something I buy all the time, but just like little things like that where I'm like, well, if the produce isn't that fresh, or other so that's what you've heard. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's would be like our go-to is we get a, have been getting a lot of produce lately since we've been dieting. So that's something I would need to look into, but. We did make these like sandwich things last night and we bought a couple peppers from there and they were nice. Yeah, so what I will say is I just moved on the uh, 42nd in Ingersoll. So like I'm off 42nd, there's like a hy drug town or whatever, you yeah. know, like the mini hy Right. Mm-hmm. And then just right off Ingersoll, I've got Price Chopper. So I have good options as far as that. Um, and every time I've gone into Price Chopper and got produce... Uh, or you know of any kind vegetables fruits. I, I've really actually been happy with it. Yeah, like their grapes I got there one like two weeks ago very good. So bottom line I like to go to Walmart because it saves me money, but I <laughs> Just like I said in in <laughs> Past episodes. I hate Walmart overall. <laughs> Walmart is the worst. Yeah, no, I don't I refuse to go to Walmart <laughs> The last time I was in a Walmart it was on the south side. And so first off that was my first mistake and <laughs> yeah. uh 
It was. Yeah, I waited in line for about twenty minutes, and then it, the line just wasn't moving. So I just dropped all my stuff on the floor and like, <laughs> what? I just went over back to the aisle and I just dropped it on the floor yep. and walked out because that's what you're gonna get if I'm waiting in line for twenty minutes and it wasn't extremely busy. Right. Damn. Uh, what I will say is that uh, shout out to Market Five One Five. I just went to that marketing conference out in um, uh, Ankeny this week, uh, close to the DMAC campus. It was really really cool. I went through uh, with the Des Moines Social Club. It was really cool. Um, we, they had an amazing speaker, Nathan T. Wright, on Instagram and uh, Facebook and whatever. Uh, he has an awesome newsletter too. Uh, but anyway, he's a he's a the head marketer I think for High B. And okay. he was doing this crazy speech. It was really cool. And he went into like he one like caveat of the speeches where he was discussing like it's crazy because our generation seventies, eighties, nineties babies, which is us, we're nineties kids. But like yeah. even the seventies and eighties kids and our grown up, grown ass adults, right. most of them have kids now, especially the seventies kids. Right. Um, they're willing to spend the extra twenty, thirty cents per product or even five dollars a trip on Target. And so, yep. what? Shout out to Target because they are doing everything correct, dude. When I get that, yeah. when I get that cart, and I'm walking through the aisles, yeah. and I'm walking, it's like not going. <laughs> no, it's like a smooth ride. It's a yep. great experience. Everyone's. I love how like everyone has like uh, you know the red shirt and the khakis. Like it's just a really clean experience. I love Target. I love shopping shopping there, and you. especially Lydia. They have amazing women's clothes. True. They have okay guys clothes. They're kind of working on it, but they have like straight up a gigantic area for women like to shop with clothing. Like it's it's just great. It's yeah, huge for women's clothing because I know Shana goes there all the time. Yeah, I've actually all been, of our girlfriends, everyone. I've been yeah. shopping there a lot recently, actually, and I do really like their stuff. I found I got, four shirts, like four yeah. of my like. You know, you have 10, 15 shirts that you wear to work. Right. Um, well, you don't because you work at Come and Go. <laughs> Believe me, I know that white shirt deal and the ties. <laughs> but, uh, um, I found four legit shirts I really love there. Oh, yeah. No, the, all of their stuff has been quality. I have, like, a bunch of flannels from there. And I've had flannels that I've had there for, I bought there, like, five years ago that I still wear because they're just solid. And, it, and I just got a couple pair of jeans there. Like, it's all really good quality stuff. Oh, you did get some jeans there? Yeah. Oh, shit. I've had, and I bought jeans. You're going to have to do a nice. review here in a couple weeks. I know, right? Have <laughs> yeah. you wear it in. Right. But, so, yeah, what's your go-to big box store? <laughs> High V or Target. No, I, I mean, like, you know, big boxes in, like, you know, Best Buy's big box, um, Walmart, Target, Kmart. It's gotta be Target. What's Kmart, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Kmart is dead. No, it's usually Target. Dude, Target is so clean. So clean. I love Target. So, uh, our hometown hero, Seth Rollins. Davenport, got, Iowa. <laughs> got uh, hurt recently. Did you see that? Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, the Dublin, uh, Ireland show, just like a house show. Obviously, it was Monday Night Raw, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, so, WWE, for everyone listening, you know, turn the podcast off if you don't like wrestling. Because we're about <laughs> to dive in. Um, but at Dub a Dublin, Ireland house show, he was just, you know, facing off against Kane. Uh, no title match, even though he is the heavyweight champion right now. Um, nothing going, nothing on the line, just normal house show stuff. He flips over Kane while Kane's at the top, but turnbuckle facing the crowd, so facing out of the ring. He flips over him. He's about to throw him onto a table, which would, would have been sick. Power bomb, yeah. Yeah, power bomb him onto a table, excuse me. And you just, like, if you see, I'll, I'll post in the uh, show notes, but... You just see his knee just buckle, just yeah, straight yeah. up. Like he's his knee is like at a hundred and thirty five degree angle, like mm -hmm. the opposite way it should be, like right. to the it's left, insane. to the left. <laughs> Every knee that he owns to the left. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's horrible. Like, but what I will say is, uh, he had a good title reign from I think January when he cashed his money in the bank. It I don't feels know. like it's been years, but yeah, right, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't follow WWE anymore. I used to be a huge fan. Shawn Michaels all day, every day. <laughs> Stone Cold Stunner, everybody. Uh, <laughs> so it's my path. Uh, I loved Undertaker, and I, Undertaker's actually retiring in w, uh, WrestleMania. Rumored to retire. I'm sure he's been rumored for a while, years. <laughs> yeah, well, he's... He's old as fuck. Yeah, he is. But he is one of the best. Yeah. Like, for sure. But 
what what's great about him is like he's he knows how to bring the best out in his opponent. Mm-hmm. So like his last like three years of like wrestling it have actually been amazing matches. Yeah. But he's brought the best out in his opponents. Like right. he just, just knows how to like and work the crowd too. Mm-hmm. You you see him like he falls, he stu- like he stumbles, yeah. like he's just and then he just you can see it in his face. He just every little like inch of his body <laughs> he knows how to like use it on the crowd. He's just had one of like the longest standing careers out of so what do you think about Brock Lesnar ending the streak? Yeah, like uh, WrestleMania. I, I mean, this was it this year. It had to happen yeah. eventually, but I don't that's know. one of the biggest things that's come out of the wrestling like mm-hmm. industry. Like that's all he's been doing lately is WrestleMania. Right. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The last couple of years, all he's done is WrestleMania. He ended Shawn Michaels' career <laughs> yeah. in 2010. No, dude, you ended his career in 1998 <laughs> when you broke his back in Survivor Series. But, you know. Um, oh, my God. Dan is just like, what is happening I right now? I never watched WWE. Oh, you okay. never watched WWF back not in the 90s, not the Attitude Era with Stone Cold Steve Austin? No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that when you're a kid, you, like, hella get into. I did, anyway. Like, I... Not until, like, the last couple years, but, like, I always thought, like, in the back of my head, I could do that. I could, I do, could that. do that. But, no, Dude. like, watching the videos, like, of, especially NXT, which yeah. is their, like, talent, like, cu- cultivating, like, subsect. Like, it's like... Uh, ECW and, like, all the smaller ones. Well, it's not like ECW, because ECW is extreme championship yeah. wrestling, like, extreme. NXT goes nuts, though. You know, like, that's what, yeah, but, like, they're using, like, chairs every single match. Yeah. Like, or, like, tables or, like, trash cans. <laughs> <laughs> that's what ECW was all about. It was yeah. just, like, nonstop extreme wrestling. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but WWE, like, what I've seen through, like, NXT, which is all the younger wrestlers, like, Triple H was, like, the head of NXT. Right. Um, he's actually, like, he's married into the family through Stephanie <coughs> McMahon. See, I know a lot about wrestling. <laughs> it's actually, like, crazy how much I know for how little, like, actual wrestling I've been watching been over the last yeah. few years. But, um, yeah. Uh, what I'm getting at is the NXT, like, the wrestlers, like you were saying, the younger ones. Mm-hmm. Crazy, like, jumping through the ty- top, like, top rope, like... Just doing yeah. absolutely un- <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Um, but anyway. Did you see the video? Uh, it was been a long time ago now, but it was with Seth Rollins. He, like, moonsaults off a fat guy and, like, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That just came I up love, recently. It was I like on that video. Yeah. It's so, funny. what I love about WWE is they're killing it social media-wise. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I'll find myself scrolling through Facebook and, like, every single, like, five posts like i'll see a wwe <laughs> video and i like, want to watch it it's yeah like, oh. exactly because the algorithms at facebook they they uh you know they are all about video right now just right. like most of the internet should be uh when it comes to like big companies like that tech companies but yeah yeah i'll get like a video of like 25 years ago the undertaker murdered right. stephanie mcmahon or yeah. like whatever right and it's just like nostalgic because yeah they're doing all those exactly cool straight up nostalgia dude the attitude era that was our era you and i probably watched like the same oh, yeah. time right but back to the whole of the story. R.I.P. to Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins title reign. Right? Yeah, Maybe. there's actually tons of memes on uh, the internet right now of like R.I.P. Seth Rollins title <laughs> reign because like yeah. he, although like the WWE is going through hard times right now as far as ratings, like they just got murdered as soon as like football came back. Oh yeah, murdered. Like yeah. it was one of the lowest like ratings. That's um, crazy seasons or I don't know how you want to put it years uh-huh. I guess um, since like 1997 yeah. when like WCW was like mm-hmm. in the you know mix it is the longest running like I guess syndicated or or show, not, not like, syndicated but like yeah the longest running TV show of all time right which we're is going insane. on like 20 some on 25 30 years or something right. crazy. it's insane yeah so, I mean you gotta give him props on that aspect props for to still Vince being McMahon. able to be relevant and like Still being able to push out content. And That's like a really things. cool story. Like I, I want to see someday if somebody like, even if it's through like the WWE Network, nine ninety nine yeah. hashtag, <laughs> gotta pay nine 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 ninety nine a month. Um, but I want to see that story where it's like Vince McMahon is the son of the actual owner. Well, R.I.P. to his father, but yeah. Vince McMahon Senior used to developed came up with WWF World Wrestling Federation and then Vince McMahon took over in like the late 80s I want to say early 80s or maybe sometime in the 80s and he turned it into like this monstrosity of like what it is today like he took over everything like they bought WCW do you know what WCW is at all 
Damn. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> oh my goodness, I've never I've never gotten into any of this. The you and I can do an entire podcast. The rest of the podcast we're talking about wrestling. All right, kids, turn it off. Yeah. No, um, but yeah, no, like we really could just do an entire podcast because yeah. there's so much that like you need to know, Dude, like when it comes down to it. You know what I would love to do? My cousin Malachi. Malachi Matthews out there in the indie wrestling scene. Hashtag he, Malachi Matthews. <laughs> he uh, has been doing some indie wrestling shit in the Midwest, and he knows like the inner workings like no other now, just from doing like his own like indie shit. Just stuff. the statewide stuff. Yeah, like if he bounced to regional, he yeah. would even have more. He's like, been like throughout the Midwest. He's done like Tennessee, Chicago. Oh, he has South definitely. Dakota, North Dakota. He's been everywhere. But um, yeah, he would uh, be a great guest, and he's done other podcasts before, so that would be yeah, something definitely. We should get him on here soon. Should try to we should just that. like just nerd out. To, uh, <laughs> Wrestling here. Yeah. So what do you what what are your thoughts when you think of WWE when you think of uh, you know glamorized fake wrestling? I don't know. Like that's the, basically what I think of it. Okay. Unfortunately, I think that's why I've but, never gotten into it because it just kind of feels fake. Yeah. No, it is a hundred percent fake. It's 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 the man's version of a uh, uh, soap opera. You right. know, it's no, like, it truly is. And I shouldn't even say man's because there's plenty of women out there. But when I, you know, it's like mm-hmm. dude, bro. Yeah, like, the masculine like, version. Right. Sure. I mean, yeah, they're basically just buff actors. They're great at what they're doing. There's a reason why The Rock went to become an amazing actor he is today. Yeah. Because they're all really good actors. Like, in the WWE. Yeah, yeah, the WWE production company actually, like, is a huge, huge thing. Like, it's more than just wrestling. It spans out to music. They have Um, music. They have movies. (laughs) Tom Cena has an album. Yeah. Like, a rap album. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. But. It's cool. (laughs) They did, uh. It is terrible. They did the movie, like, Oculus. They do a lot of weird shit that doesn't even have anything to do with <coughs> See No Evil with Kane 1 and 2. Yeah. I remember seeing that first one in like 2004, 2005. I have it on DVD. <laughs> you do? Yeah. It was so awful. It's. I mean, I thought it was cool, but I was young. Honestly, compared to most horror movies, it's not that bad because yeah. let's dive into this. Horror movies, on in general, awful. Almost all of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, Halloween I mean, just happened last week. We had that episode 16. If you listen to it, we were all a little bit hungover. I lost my voice from Halloween. <laughs> but um, overall, Halloween, I mean, excuse me, horror movies, awful. I just rewatched Friday the 13th, awful. It's just the like, original? I mean, yeah. I, I guess, what do you mean by awful? Like, why like, do you think it's... I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I go into it. I, I'm like excited. I want to get scared. I want to get spooky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like nothing ever happens. Like, it's just like... But, it, that's it's part like of that. it's like it's I know you have to like submit to this like yeah virtual world where like you're like okay it's gonna happen and like uh, I'm okay with that like even though they could just call the police like you know you have to like <laughs> right. you have to like just submit to this you have to get into the mindset right of that's but what Lydia says all the time for me girlfriend. I haven't been actually like scared of a movie probably since I was like ten years old but I still love the genre and I still love like watching it happen and. Seeing all the kills and like how original they can be. So back to Evil Dead. Have you seen the remake of Evil yeah. Dead? I think it's like one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. Oh like, yeah, alone in the last few years. Oh yeah, it was really good. I would. Say I don't so. know about best. When that guy gets like the hammer, like he's like trying to defend. The, remember the nerd guy with like the glasses? <laughs> he's like whole, trying to defend like the dude or the woman or whatever killing him. He's like gets the hammer just like across his fingers, and you can see like or yeah. not hammer like the knife or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> he's getting like chopped at, and like you can see his fingers just peel away. Like, literally, <laughs> his fingers just get chopped off. Right. And you're just like what the heck? How they do that, you know? Dude, what about the like that final scene or whatever when the just gets sliced in half? Oh like, god, I love it. that's so cool, <laughs> so good. That was that's a really good one. Like, see, for horror to be done, like for, to work for me, like it has to not only be believable, like not only like you know they can't just call the cops <laughs> and solve this situation with. Yeah. A that. lot of movies have been getting better at like explaining stuff like that before. So you like in. it follows. It follows one of like the call. It's like instant cult classic. Right. Lots of uh, critics. It's critically acclaimed. Lots of people love it. I didn't love it especially, but Dan. I yeah, I saw that. I was about to say I have mixed feelings about that. Same. But back to the horror thing. I feel like there's a big difference too between horror movies that are just in there for like the shock and the gore, right, right, and the scare. And then there's the more suspenseful ones. I'm right. much more of a guy who likes horror movies that have a good story, right. more suspenseful instead of just showing just a bunch of blood. And True. Guts. So oh. I think that's, like, the, the suspenseful, like, craziness. I think that's, like, a thriller, right? Yeah, like, that's more thriller category. But 
I do almost prefer that. I was going to say, though, what do you guys think about movies where they're just like slashers and gore and bloody and they just like start off like the first scene someone gets killed? Or do you like like that slow build to where the ending is like just this huge, like crazy massacre of something like... I do, I like the mini, mini builds, like, right. where we're, like, focusing on this character, this character's running away from this guy, this character's trying to get away from this, mm-hmm. and then they get slaughtered. <laughs> like, that's why I like, that's why yeah. I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. original. Yeah. Remake is actually really good. I loved it as a kid when it came mm-hmm. out in, like, what, mid-2000s. Right. Love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because it focuses on one or two characters, they're running away from this hulking, like, you know, slow dude, and then they get chopped, they get owned, like, they get murdered. That's the that's the best. How did you guys feel about Saw? So Saw Saw <laughs> was actually free on Netflix. Um, if you you know follow the easy peasy, <laughs> we posted on the website about you know our monthly Netflix and Amazon updates of the streaming services. Saw one, two, three, and four were free on Netflix uh, last mm-hmm. last month for October. Uh, Liddy and I were gonna watch Saw like rewatch and like see hey was this really as good as we remember it? Because yeah. I remember Saw one and two especially as being. Amazing. Like yes. after that, it, yeah. right? But the first couple were. Yeah, I yeah. never got a chance to like watch it with Lydia and like you know see was it really that good? But yeah. Nick, I think you and Shana checked some out. Yep, yeah, we watched. Uh, we rewatched them all. I was always. I mean, I was a fan just because of like how it was like original. I guess like exactly the, the kick saw like yeah. So no, it's cool. really dope, and it made like this huge franchise that probably made a shit ton of money. So that's cool that. Anytime, like, you can start up a new, like, franchise of Paranormal horror, like, Activity is, yeah. like, pretty much the prime example. Yeah. What do you think about that? I've never been into Paranormal Activity, <laughs> except for the first one. Because that's what I feel like See, the problem is with, like, movies or anything you can make money off of. Like, okay, you have a movie, it does really well. Mm-hmm. So then now it's just the theme that they just make a million movies after until it's just burnt I mean, out. And it almost just ruins the initial... I have to agree in some opinion. senses. I mean, they do that in every every single like, um, I don't know, like all media, like movies, yeah. video games. There's an Assassin's Creed, a Call of Duty every year. Right. Movies. There's like, you know, they're I don't know, they're franchises. They make right. everything a franchise. If it does well, instant franchise. And- right. And but I mean, some of them are done really well, and they can carry like a solid career. But others are just. Terrible. <laughs> like, right. Kind of like the paranormal activities for me. They've been decent, but not very well written. But I was going to say, we mentioned Leatherface, Leatherface a minute ago. I was uh, scrolling, <gasps> I was scrolling through um, Instagram earlier, and someone posted a meme about Leatherface, and I guess the original actor, Gunnar Hansen, actually recently died. Oh, so no way. That's wow. kind of weird that we were just talking about horror all of a sudden, and yeah. we saw this post where he had So there was Leatherface, so. Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees... Michael Myers. Uh, Michael Myers. Is there Are we talking about like original? Yeah, or Chucky. There's Chucky. Ch- Little Chucky over there. Dude, Chucky was always hilarious. I love every single Chucky movie has always been really solid. Because they're meant to just be dumb and like... I love Chucky in the comedy. Chucky and the Bride or whatever. The Bride of Chucky. I remember watching... Yeah, The Bride of Chucky, yeah. I remember watching Jennifer that Tilly. like... Yeah, that <laughs> woman's voice is just creepy enough. Yeah, dude. No. So, rest so who's your favorite? Out of those, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say I have a favorite. I'm sorry. I have a favorite. What about you, Nick? Um, honestly, I'd have to say Jason. Probably. Jason, I love it. I just love everything just a about beast. it. Yeah. So, like I was saying, I rewatched Friday the Thirteenth last month, uh, right before Halloween. Does not hold up at all. Yeah. Oh my God. The first but, one is not. There's no Jason. It's all about his mom. Uh-huh. So his mom's the murderer. It's just so. Ugh, yeah, God. but I mean that's cool how the story builds. Uh, what True. is the um. The artist from Every Time I Die, he's also Jordan like, a really good artist. Yeah. He did the pictures. Of, Dude, totally. I, love, I wanted a print so bad. Yeah. Those are so cool. I yeah, love totally. But he Jordan actually Buckley. did like, each character like through the movie, like how he progresses. Exactly, so. yeah. Every That's single cool. version of the face of like, yeah. just like that, you know, the neck, from the neck up, essentially. Right. So like, Which, you know, he has like a different neck, a different, like, a different mm-hmm. face, different ears. Like, you can see like seaweed or like, you yeah. know, like some like whatever on him. Which is really cool because a lot of people don't know that he didn't even get his mask until like the third movie. Right, so, like, exactly. Yeah. People just like, that's a staple of like him and they think that's all it is. Even though I don't really care for the original Friday the 13th anymore because <laughs> I, I mean, as a kid you like get scared right. of everything and just love it. Like I was afraid of the dark until like 13. Um, <laughs> Nickelodeon, are you afraid of the dark? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, that was an awesome show. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't hold up anymore. Have you watched any horror movies recently, Dan? We gotta get you talking here over there. <laughs> um, I don't watch movies that often. We just right. talked about It Follows. Yeah. I did see that recently, obviously, just because it came out this year. What do you think right. about it, then? It's kind of weird. It's like... I, it's, I would give it a solid six and a half out of ten. Yeah. See, like, that's where I'm at, but, like, critically, it's a cl- <laughs> like, critically acclaimed movie. Like, a lot of reviewers, a lot of critics, a lot of people from IGN, which I follow, um, yeah, are huge yeah. fans of it. And really, really good reviews. Yeah. It's one of those movies that has a lot of layers. It's an onion, like you said in the past. <laughs> like, peel it you, back. You have to, yeah, because, I mean, there's actually a lot more going on than just... Like what people thought in the beginning. Yeah, people. It's, it's like in the media, it's like this STD movie where if you screw this, per, like, it, yeah, everyone's mm-hmm. dying of an STD, but it's really not. Like, no, it's, it's not at all. He, like, I read an article with the director, and he's just like, I just wanted to make a monster movie, and now everybody's like, you know, making this, trying to dive into it a lot more deeper than it actually is. I don't know, which people do. People overthink everything. Right. Totally. <laughs> They're going to try to find some meaning to the madness, even though he just wanted to make a cool movie. R.I.P. Seth Rollins. <laughs> Back to that. R.I.P. Seth Rollins title reign. I'm, I'm just looking at this s- screenshot here of his <laughs> knee. It's just... It, R.I.P. your ACL, man. It's R. horrible. Your ACL. Horrible. So, R.I.P. to Seth Rollins' ACL and uh, R.I.P. to my youth. <laughs> yeah! Uh, the Neighborhood's new album came out uh, last week. Uh, well, what I don't know what today is. But October 30th, and I really, really enjoy it. Same day uh, as Foxing's uh, new album, Dealer, which is amazing. But get back into that. So, The Neighborhood's new album is called Wiped Out. Again, it came out on October 30th. Um, it's just a very solid, like, indie, like, alt-rock. So, who is The Neighborhood? The Neighborhood, everybody knows The Neighborhood from the song Sweater Weather. Yeah, my so. absolute favorite song, 2012. My favorite song, hands down, off the EP. But Amazing song. But, like, overall, that album, I feel like, wasn't really that solid. And a lot of, like, critics say the same thing. Like, that was just kind of... Right. I hate how bands do that. They have, like, this one great standout it's song. It's an amazing song. That whole EP is really good. But then we get into I Love You the from 2000... album. What, yeah. last year, 2014? Uh, 13. 13, right. And it was, like, an honorable mention just because I love Sweater Weather so much. Right. Afraid was their second single, which yeah. I don't... And I'll never understand. Right. Um... Yeah, I mean, that song is just really, really weak. Like, it's, it's a solid, like, you know, alternative rock right, song. Right. Like, as in, like, it's catchy, you know, mm-hmm. you can, like, you find yourself singing it. Like, <laughs> when I wake up, I'm, I'm afraid. afraid. Yeah. Like, it has really, really good harmonies and right. so forth. But, yeah, I mean, uh, as far as the second single, are you kidding me? Yeah. It's just strange to me. Like, I've noticed that with a lot of bands recently. They'll have, like, a, a fantastic song, but I listen to the whole album as a whole. And it doesn't, like, stand up. It seems like that song was written by somebody else, or they wrote that specifically. No kidding. To have a good song on the airwave, so, like, for the radio, so people pick it up. But then the rest of it's shit. So it just doesn't even make sense. But this new album, I feel like, is very solid overall. I don't really dislike any of the songs. Okay. They're a lot more upbeat. Uh, musically, they're done really well. The beats are done really well. So R.I.P. to My Youth is a single right now. It's been it out like, for a what? A few, uh, since summer. A few months, Since yeah. summer, yeah. So I like that single. Mm-hmm. Should I listen to the album then? If you like the single, you should definitely listen to okay. the album. Um, I don't love the single. I, I put it a little bit above They're Afraid. Yeah. You know, I put it above that a little bit, mm-hmm. but not by too much. Um, overall, I love that band. I've had a few chances uh, to see them. Have Never you? actually took it because, I mean, you can't justify driving to Minneapolis to song. First Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. But, I mean, I think this new album is going to be good for their career. And cool. it's going to push them forward. So I would definitely recommend it. I don't really do ratings or anything like that. But if I had to put a rating. How many lemons out of how many lemons? Uh, I'd be like seven and a half lemons out of ten lemons. Okay. It's pretty too bad. Very solid. That's, uh, a, that's a good album. What about you, Danny? You've been diving in any music lately? Anyone coming out with this any This week's been pretty dry for music right. for me. I, I Yeah, I was just looking before the segment, and there's really any music I've been listening to this week has is old. It's yeah. nothing new. Um, so what have you been listening to? Just... Just <laughs> yes. I love fall weather, and I love listening to music seasonally. Yes, so, same here. Yeah, so I've just been listening to what maybe I usually listen to in the fall. Right. Isn't it's like crazy how, how like the the season itself is like nostalgic because of the music listening. Yep. Dude, we were just on our road trip to see um, 
armor, excuse me, armor for sleep. And I was talking to you about how much I love minus the bear. Yeah. I love that band. Omni was one of my favorite albums of all time. Really love it. And I introduced you to minus the bear. And I told you about oh. how I, one of my favorite concerts of all time ever was when I went to Iowa city with my friend Mallory and we just straight up like had the best time of our life at Blue Moose. Like, right. and it's hard for me to ever say I had the best time of my life in Iowa City for anything because <laughs> I don't like that place. Right. Um, but yeah, like I just remember jumping up and down. Like it was before I was single then. So like, but like there was a girl next to me jumping up and down. She was getting into music. She was like that stereotypical like manic pixie dream girl type thing. Like she just like like there was like light shining on her even though it was like a dark club. <laughs> oh like, so, like like you know she was like. Oh, out of a movie. <laughs> like, yeah, she was, it was just cool. Like, you, you know, I got into the groove. It was really cool. Um, but, hey, yeah. shout out to Blue Moose, because guess what they're doing? Bringing my boys back. Every time I die, I just got a sick announcement. They're coming on 12-6 to Blue Moose. They're working with some, uh, it's an off day for the August Burns Red uh, Stick to Your Guns Every Time I Die tour. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they're working with some locals. Um, That's sick. Yeah, shout out to Straight Up because they're opening for Every Time I Die. Sick local band. Really like them a lot. So, A band that I recently rediscovered. He was one of my favorite hardcore bands of all time. Straight From The Path. Ah, nice. I love Dude, Straight yeah. From The Path. Their, their new album, album. Their second album that came out, Rising Sun, I think. Is it? Rising Sun is really Is that the new one? Re- no, that's from a couple years ago. Oh, okay. This is from like five years ago. Okay. Yeah. And no, that's one of my favorite it's hardcore very, albums of all time. I that's mean, crazy that you like Straight From The Path because they've really only in the last year and a half, maybe two, yeah. really risen up and like become a, like a huge, mm-hmm. huge band in the scene. Oh, they are? Because I saw them at Vaudeville. This is like five years ago. Yeah, they played I mean, at Vaudeville and then a year after that they played at People's Court. Yeah. And then I want to say they even played at House of Bricks back when that was yep. relevant. But I never saw them at House of Bricks. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, like, dude. RIP to House of Bricks. <laughs> dude, I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, they are a really solid band. I like their lyrics. That's what really stands out to me. They actually, like, speak about some real shit. So they actually cool. kicked out this asshole at their show at People's Court. Were you guys either at that show? Uh-uh. There was at, this, wait, what show? When Straight From The Path played at People's Court. With who, though? They weren't headlining at People's Court. They played with Norma Jean, I think. I probably was there. Um, I don't really care for Norma Jean overall. I only liked him when Josh Scroggins was in it. Yeah. But, from but, but yeah, and you, there was this asshole in the crowd <laughs> who just started like shoving this lady around, just like Damn. totally not cool. Oh yeah, dude hitting guy or girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude hitting girl. And like a couple people, I mean, where everybody could kind of see it. And then there was like a couple guys who kind of came up, but this guy was just on one. <laughs> and then like in the middle of the song, he just stopped and they like, get the fuck out of the show. Da, 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 da. That's legit. It was awesome. That's cool. So, Dan, you said you haven't listened to any music lately. I'm surprised you aren't listening to Gold Link's new album. He just released it on iTunes and all. Oh, I actually did get that. It leaked a couple of days early. So okay. I did listen to that. And I just listened to it. So who months. is Gold Link? He's a rapper. But he has really, really sick beats, right? Like he, has, <laughs> he has, but he he has great production. Yeah, so yeah. Great. I, I like want to say he's got a lot. Of, he has production from Louis Elastic, Tom Mish. Good friends with Mr. Carmack, which is yeah, he has a, a song with Mr. Carmack, if I remember right, a called "Dance on Me." Or no, yeah. he has a that's a remix actually. I love that song. Dance though. on Me is on the album and then Carmack remixed it. But yeah, no, he's a really good lyricist and it's awesome to see him blow up. I know he was on tour this year and I heard nothing but good things about it through um like Rolling Stone or like big yeah, publications. Yeah, really. Big publications, yeah. yeah. And he's done some great stuff on Apple Music's um Beats Radio or Beats One Radio, whatever. Yeah, he's done some really cool stuff lately. They've been killing it on Beats One Radio. I didn't even listen to it that much, but you hear about it on like oh, yeah. social media like crazy, like wildfire. Yep. Like everyone's talking about Beats One Radio because like they will have like your favorite artist or the next up and coming artist like Gold Link. Yep. he's up and up and coming artist, and they're gonna have him talking. In an interview, they're gonna have him DJ. They're gonna have him pick his favorite songs. It's yep. really cool. You can like experience the artists like. Like if they're your best friend, like you know, let's let's That's, see what like Fanagram want to hear. Like right. let, let's see what you know. Uh, Drake does a lot of stuff on Beats One Radio too. Oh. Like let's see what the Six God wants to hear. Like <laughs> yeah. what's his favorite music right now? His right. favorite music. Yeah, no, it is legit. Um, and a lot of artists that we've talked about does stuff with Apple Music. Um, Muramasa has recently done a lot of stuff with Apple exactly, Music last yeah. week. Um, Mr. Carmack did. 
yeah, like you said, Drake. So that Muramasa segment, you said that you were like kind of not cool with it being like all old stuff. You were like looking forward to having him. Well, yeah, he's working on an album right now, so mm-hmm. I'm just hunkering down until that gets released. But <laughs> he did release a new single in the past month. I wasn't a big fan of it, and there's a music video that was released too that went along with it. Um, his production is a phenomenal. Right. But I, I did not like the vocals for this new song. Was it our the, first or second episode where we discussed the DP that came out earlier this year? Yes. Oh, we did. It was called Someday Somewhere. But this new song, I forget what the title is, but it's with a vocalist named Shura, S-H-U-R-A. And I like some of her vocal stuff, but it just didn't work for me on his new hmm. single that came out. Right. So hopefully the album will have better material. You can't argue with his production. Like, uh, that was my number one thing when we discussed his EP, Someday Somewhere. Right. Um, on episode one or two of the Easy Peasy podcast, you can go check that shit out for free right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, that was the number one thing. I could not argue with his production. Dan? Yeah, and he's only 18. Jeez, so Sam Gellatry age, yo. Right. <laughs> Sam Gellatry has just released those two singles, too. I know we mentioned it on the last podcast episode. Those two singles, dude, I'm so hyped for his actual LP, his new album coming out. Oh, oh, it's, oh no, excuse I me. I think it's an EP, right? EP, his next EP coming out in, in uh, November. He released, like, one of my favorite EPs, or releases of the year, Short Stories EP in Which is February. Phenomenal. You and I bonded hardcore over that EP. <laughs> I still find myself visiting, revisiting it all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually showed someone that EP this week. I'm happy that I met Dan. Right. That music. Totally. <laughs> if I didn't take anything else from my experiences being a friend with Dan, I got some good ass <laughs> music out of it. <laughs> so, Dan, I'm, I'm That's surprised. what you'll say at my funeral if I were to die this week. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, he was an alright guy, but thank God he, like, had He knew what, what was up during music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I will say is, I'm surprised you aren't also mentioning the white EP from Mr. Carmack. I mean, you haven't listened to that at all? I have. It was fairly good. It was about 50 50 for me. I right. really liked half of it. Half of it seems. Yeah. Where can so, I find that? Because I did try to find it on On his website, straight up. It, oh, he, has, he has a website made through, I think, which is what I hope to do in the future with our website, um, through Squarespace. Okay. And it's just, you can buy it or pay for what you, pay what you want. Like, you can buy... <laughs> you can pay for what? Pay for what? <laughs> <laughs> um... God, I love that song. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you can literally just download it for free or pay whatever amount you want. Okay. Um, so yeah, give him a thousand I thought, dollars. I think I... <laughs> Looked for it on SoundCloud. I couldn't find it. What do you guys think about Adele's new single, though? It's about a week old now. Hello. Adele. Adele. Oh, Adele. I don't really follow Adele. I don't follow Adele very much, but you can't escape her, and that's what I'm going to say right yeah. now. She's an, she, That voice. Yeah. That voice is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, she's huge. 21 was... Not just physically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Not I just to, I hashtag. To. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Adele. Adele is uh, her twenty one album that came out in two thousand one, I believe, because she's about my age and she was twenty one when she released it. So right. I was born in nineteen ninety. Um, that was on the number like top ten like selling album like num- It was in the top ten of like monthly sales, I should say, at Billboard top ten for literally over a year. That's like insane. 25 is going to blow uh, Taylor Swift's album out of the water, 1989. Really? Just blow it out of the water. It's probably going to be the number one selling album of, of the year, even though it just came out in a few weeks from now. Right. So, like, in no- late November. I think it comes out Black Friday, which right. is, like, that's cool. her record label oh, yeah, knows what they're doing. Music's gonna, <laughs> yeah, the music comes out on Friday. So right? We like talked about that in July. They started that, which I really love. You guys, you guys still on the train of oh, uh, yeah. loving it coming out on Friday? For sure. So, yeah, I like it because it gives you a lot of stuff to listen to during the weekend right. but at the same time Tuesdays are such Mondays and Tuesdays for me are such bland days at the beginning of the week right. so I did enjoy that music would come out during the first <laughs> few days of the week where you're just like to miserable just yeah. trying to get through the week I'm not gonna lie I do most of my listening Monday through Friday because I'm at the gym listening or I'm traveling from Ames you know going to school or you know I, I do most of my listening Monday through Friday so when sure. it did come out on Tuesday I yeah. did get. I did listen to a lot more music. Uh, I find myself. <laughs> let's get into that a little bit. Uh, not listening to any music at all this week. Um, I have nothing to tell you except for Adele's single "Hello" is really, really solid, and I like Sam Gellatry singles of last week. Um, but yeah, I've listened to any music lately because I've been not dieting, not working out. <laughs> took the whole week off from the gym, which I haven't done for like multiple years, an entire week. It's yeah. crazy. 
I do every few months. It, yeah. It keeps you, like, going. I don't know. Good refresher. Yeah. I've been spending most of my time watching Fallout 4 videos. Like, <laughs> just, like, the trailer over and over and over again. Because I cannot wait for that game. Comes out November 10th. I believe, yeah, this Tuesday. Yep. Super excited. Oh, that's, that's coming up. I'm about to quit easy peasy, guys. Sorry. I'm <laughs> this quitting. will be the last episode. It comes out in two days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. I'm not going to be able to play it till Friday, though, because I have this huge paper due. Hashtag school sucks. You're hashtag dropping be, out. Are you going to, like, did you pre order? Are you going to. I got the Pit Boy somewhere? edition. So, what that means, kids, is <laughs> I'm going to have a plastic, like, Pit Boy. So, in the video game, like, you have this, like, I don't know, like, wrist. Like contraption that like you can control like whatever your inventory mm -hmm. and stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have that and you can put your iPhone six into it. Oh my god. And like and I already downloaded the app. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like yeah, I'll Here, show you that. That's legit. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the app real quick. But yeah, it's sick as hell. I'm so excited. I'm gonna break up with Lydia. It's over. <laughs> Sorry guys, pretty easy peasy. <laughs> but yeah. For a week, you're gonna still play in. No, uh, so what I'm gonna try doing is I have this capture card now. I'm just gonna literally just record everything I do, and so it's an RPG. It's like an adventure RPG. Um, like the an game, open world. Open world, exactly. Like very After a nuclear war with China, which is cool because that's probably gonna happen to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 2077, I believe. So I mean, it's a, a ways out until we all have a nuclear war with China. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be an 80 year old man by then. But anyway, we have that nuclear war with them. There's like infected people running around. I forget radiated like radiation all over the place. Like, okay, it's just it's really cool. It's like an open wasteland of people. But yeah, you guys want to see the app here? Yes. What is it all about? What does it do? So well, it's, a, it's a pit boy. It's like legit. This is what is on your wrist, like your character in the video game. Like what? Look, it's, it's like, like running through like the code and stuff. <laughs> like that. That's legit. It's like typing out the codes, like bringing up the pit boy, like damn. Some old school stuff. Here we go. Loading, loading. That's your character. <laughs> and then you pick uh, full screen. I'm on Xbox One. Oh. oh, wait. Does it connect to the game then? It connects to your Xbox One through the Wi Fi. Yeah. yeah. So, then so, you have, so when you're like using your wrist, whatever this is called, in the game, you can actually just use your phone. So I don't know it. if it goes that deep into it where you can actually use it, but it does, that it will update. So like it shows that your character. That would be worth it. Yeah. You guys see it. how it's, well, it's a free app, but it's yeah. $120 pre-order. And right, you right. only can get this through the pre-order, which is cool. Um, you can see that's the character. It says, this is the um, demo mode. So like, obviously we don't have a game. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, it will show your special, like, it will show you, like, your HP for your head and, lit, and limbs, and, like, it's cool. Your stats and stuff? Yeah. That's legit. That's cool as hell. Hell yeah. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm about to go dive into that hardcore. But like I said, it sucks. I can't even play it until Friday. But there's also, dude. there's already people, like, streaming it right now. Mm -hmm. Like, there's people, because... Hey, shout out to Extra Life. Anybody out there like likes to watch video game streaming? There's tons of awesome like video game editors, video game everybody just like uh, streaming for Extra Life, which is uh, the Children's Miracle Network. So I think they hook up hook uh, dying kids up with uh, like their last dying wish. Wow. Well, I don't know what the Children's <laughs> Miracle Network does, but like it's a charity or um thing where you can like donate to uh, like people playing 24 hours of gaming straight up from 8 a.m. to like 8 a.m. it just finished here today this morning nice. but yeah um video game like big people in the video game industry like editors um of like big websites like IGN are doing their own thing big websites like Kotaku but yeah it's cool that's you, guys, you guys don't watch any video games at all, do you? Like, any any streaming? I do, actually. You do? That's the only, like, way I still kind of keep up with games. Right. Is I'll watch, like, um... What are those things where, like, they try to get through the game as quick as possible? Like, oh, um... What's speed speedruns. Speedruns. I watch yeah. those sometimes. Those are fun. Oh, yeah, I'll just watch some gameplay just to see what it's like, because I don't really game anymore. Right, yeah, you don't game anymore, and it's a good so. way to, like, still be a part of that world. That's kind of how I feel about WWE, because right. I see all those Facebook videos, yeah. like, I watch it, and I kind of keep up with the posts, like, it talks about, oh, this guy lost the title True. belt at this uh, pay-per-view. Like, that's how I keep up with it. Right. No, I was about to say, I don't game anymore, but the only video game videos I'll actually watch is when... 
The new Grand Theft Auto came out on PC, oh. and people were just modding it like crazy. They're no, still modding it. Yeah, and there's just the most ridiculous stuff <laughs> that they do on that, and I always find that amusing. Those are hilarious. So the people that did Red vs. Blue for Halo 2, you guys know what Red... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Everyone knows what Red vs. Blue is because it's one of the things that kind of came up, like a, a channel that came up with uh, Rooster Teeth, with YouTube. Like, YouTube right. was has been gigantic since it, its inception, really. Mm -hmm. But, like, that was one of the original, like... This is a channel, Rooster Teeth. They're gonna like make content for YouTube, like it's their own like right. gigantic thing. And um, anyway, what I'm getting at is like they modded Halo Two and like they made a story out of it. Like they had dialogue that they input into the game. You know, <laughs> like they would like move the characters, like the characters would move in the story, and like they had like a whole thing. But GTA is doing this now too, like to the community, to the video game community, to like any like a, a narrative community in some sort of sense they're like recreating tv shows with um gta characters <laughs> like people are doing crazy stuff modding gta like they're legit recreating movies that's because you can like you can do anything with it right right anything that's you can play as a cat <laughs> <laughs> legit you can just meow meow oh, running yeah. around just playing as a cat can you shoot people as a cat though? Yeah. Or steal cars? Yeah, I mean, it does. You don't have a gun. I think you have like a gun, like <laughs> holstered on your back. That's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Some just you can't carry stuff. a gun with you know, paws. I That's think, hilarious. Right? Is that how science works? <laughs> um, but anyway, Dan, you have a PS2 out in the hall. What do you guys usually dip into? Um, I got Crash Team Racing. For oh, the PS1. I love Crash Team Racing. <laughs> PSX, which is a <laughs> classic, and then I have Star Wars Battlefront Two. I don't know what happened to the first one. I love the first and second, and the third one's coming out in a month. Can't wait. <laughs> well, for this that. month, I'm glad November. Did. Yeah. So, are you gonna buy an Xbox One or a PS4 for Star Wars Battlefront Four or I Three? We talked about this last episode. Right. I might try to rent a console or maybe. <laughs> it's so funny. That's play. right. We talked about this. I remember like getting home. Like, did he really just say that on the show? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna. And then I listened to the show when I, right before I posted it, and I'm like, he did. He said he's gonna rent a console. Are you kidding me? There's no such thing as renting a console. There are this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, who? Doesn't family video and then. <laughs> I, th I mean, it, it was what a thing. I don't know. I've never game. It's been a thing. I, is Family I, Video like a net, uh, like a streaming service? What is Family Video? Oh my gosh. Is that a real question? <laughs> no, I'm just being sarcastic <laughs> asshole because like... <laughs> family Video. <laughs> for real, they used to be able to rent consoles. I do remember this. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it's still a thing. Just Google it. I'm sure. So yeah, Star Wars, you guys, you guys hyped? I am. For the movie or the game? <laughs> For, I mean, just in general, you guys hype for the, yeah, the movie and the game being released. Star Wars coming back uh, the first time in, what, like six years or so. J.J. Mm -hmm. Abrams directing 7, 8, and 9, you know. I've never been a huge fan of Star Wars. I've never seen the original, so like A New Hope, um, you know, 4, 5, and 6. Right. I've only seen the prequels. I'm a kid that's like never saw them in theaters, late to the game, saw... Yeah. Uh, yeah, one, two, and three, and I just was like, this is dumb. Like, oh my God. I didn't like it. I didn't like, yeah. well, come on, who likes one, two, and three? Okay, okay, I will Any say Star this. Wars fan this ever? Was, this was no, something. No, all the Star Wars fans that know one, two, and three suck. They think okay, four, no, five, and six. Okay, no, no, there's something that's going to blow your mind, actually. There was this Reddit post um, within the past two weeks where someone just took apart the first three episodes and it actually makes sense. And everybody hates Jar Jar Binks, right? <laughs> right. And I'm not going to explain this as He's well as this article. He's a racist character. <laughs> but from what episode one looks like, if you really analyze it, um, Jar Jar Binks was like a Sith Lord or something, which sounds ridiculous. <laughs> which sounds ridiculous. I but barely even know these, what that means. There's all these different hints in the first episode. Like, well, the, like the... Yeah, like episode one, that he was, and then the theory is that there's just so much backlash that he's just an idiot, basically. <laughs> that, that's when they that's when they introduced Count Dooku for episode two to be the main bad guy, and he just didn't have much of a backstory, and he just kind of seemed like he was plopped in there. Weird. So you should look into it because it's, it yeah. was really mind blowing. There's all these little things in episode one that you would have never noticed. And there's he has it all recorded. So look I mean the yeah. the consensus around the I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm even part of the Star Wars community, but the <laughs> consensus is is that the Clone Wars cartoon is actually like really good and like really, really awesome backstory to like a whole bunch of that stuff. Like nice. the actual Clone Wars. Um, which I happened like what 
episode one or two, I think. Episode two, I think. Okay. Yeah. So you guys going to be in the theater on December, what, 16th, Thursday? Uh, yeah, I was talking on the show that I'm going to see it opening night at the IMAX. Yeah, really okay. Nice. Which December seventeenth. Interesting. Excuse me. I'm down. Are you gonna be? Go. Are you gonna be out there? I want to go. Isn't it crazy how like the it, like broke a whole bunch of like theater websites when it like the <laughs> yeah. when you can buy pre-sale tickets like it broke a whole bunch of websites and like people in like San Francisco bigger cities like Chicago like it sold out instantly all the theaters and like people were like selling those tickets on Craigslist and stuff like insane. from eighty to a hundred dollars are you kidding me that's nuts I mean you can but still buy tickets here in Des Moines if you want to go see it like, <laughs> right. we don't have that problem <laughs> or you just not pay attention to the internet and go see it the second day. Yeah, no I'm kidding. <laughs> or the week after. Yeah. Um, so, bottom line, you guys aren't really too into Star Wars, never grew up with it. Like, you didn't buy action figures as an 80s, 90s kid. Like, most people, like, most kids that, like, were into Star Wars have, like, like, that connection to, like, buying the action figures and growing up with it. I think we're a little bit too young to right. really be into totally. Star Wars. Yeah. Because I agree. It was this, like, groundbreaking trilogy when right. it came out. Four, five, and six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did have some of my uncle's old, like, OG Star Wars toys, like the Millennium Falcon and shit, but they were metal. Okay. They were wow. Legit. I wish I still had them, because cool. they were amazing, and I played with them all the time, but, yeah, I never really was, like, a super huge fan, but, like, I always, like, appreciated it, and I have the, I have 4, 5, and 6 on VHS. Okay. So Cool. Yeah. yeah. I want to get back into it. Uh, I mean, I, I want to, like, watch them. Like, mm-hmm. I know, like, six movies. In between now and December 17th, I barely have enough time to play three <laughs> hours of fucking Fallout. Before. <laughs> but, like, I want to watch the movies. I want to check it out. I kind of want to see if... I, I really am excited for J.J. Abrams, one of my favorite directors right now um, over the last few years. I love Cloverfield. That movie, yeah. like brought my friends and I together like we bonded over Cloverfield you guys ever see that movie yeah Yeah. it was like that first person yeah yeah it was like the shaky cam like monster movie like it was like the United States version of like Godzilla or like you know it was cool making people throw up in the theater (laughs) yeah yeah no kidding like that's the thing with first person like shaky cam movies like Blair Witch Project like most people are not puking because they're like scared or afraid right. like freaking out like motion yeah. yeah but anyway I want to get into it I love JJ JJ Abrams I'm like excited I think he can do some good stuff you guys watch the Star Trek movies um I've never been a Star Trek fan but see I that's the thing we're but not I, in that yeah. generation you know yeah but I, I did see the couple that he um directed in the past five years and they were good but i just never been into star trek so i don't really have any emotional connection to it true thank you for listening to episode 17 of the easy peasy podcast a little bit better than episode 16 i think would you say the <laughs> same dan I would say all of our episodes are the best episodes <laughs> it's not the, it's the most popular best podcast on the internet around the universe spread it around yeah, spread it, spread it around. Yeah. <laughs> Get those juices for some reason. After you said spread it around, I just like pictured Paris Hilton eating that baconator like what? on that car. Like you remember that commercial, oh the infamous God. infamous yeah. commercial where she eating like the Arby's or Hardee's or yeah. whatever that crappy sandwich shop, <laughs> burger shops, baconator. Where she's like, it's the ju- like grease is drooling like from her mouth. I you're looking at me question. weird, Dan. You don't know what I'm talking about. I Paris know. Hilton. I know. Do you even know who that is? And I know Hardy's commercials are always over sexualized. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. This one. is like the oh, prime yeah. example. Everyone yeah, always talks about. I think it. it was the first of that like series of like chicks in their commercials. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like the main one. Anyway, <laughs> when you said spread it around, I just pictured Paris Hilton spreading around a bunch of bebops all up on her chest. <laughs> Thank you for listening to episode seventeen. I'm your host Sean S. Johnson. Sean Johnson. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Sean S. Johnson. Uh, Nick, where where can they find you, Nick? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at BazookaXNick and Facebook at Nick Gandy Art. Yo, check out Nick Gandy Art because guess what? He's doing this gigantic, like, poster-sized print. Uh, it's really cool. Like, two, what, Pumas or, like, what are the... Uh, yeah, two... Pumas. <laughs> like, it's a shoe brand. <laughs> yeah, two Panthers. Panthers, that's what I meant to Actually, say. Actually, yeah, I'm doing this, like, art show at work. Like, every once in a while, they, okay. they'll do an art show at work just to, like 
showcase our employees are more than robots. Yeah, they they have they actually yeah. have yeah. talent. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I guess they're supposed. And you to be work a at prize. Wells Fargo. Yeah, and I guess there's supposed to be a prize involved too. So I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. Well, of course you're gonna win. No offense. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's some hidden gems out there. <laughs> you're so <laughs> modest and like, like last week you were not trying to like trash on Five One Five Alive. Like you're not trying to trash on them. Like that's for, just not gonna make my dick any bigger if I do that. So I don't really care to. It's trash not about them. making your dick bigger. <laughs> like come on. <laughs> well, we all. No, there's no way to do that. That's I mean, people, none of us have looked into it. <laughs> oh my god. Well, no. yeah, I don't know. People trash on stuff. I was like, what's it getting? Bazooka X next Twitter, Instagram. You run the easy peasy at the easy peasy. You run that on Instagram. You admin there. Um, yeah, you can find the easy peasy at the easy peasy on Twitter. Dan, where can they find you? Find me at. Just kidding. Find me in the real world. Stealth mode, Dan. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah, and